Good evening and welcome to Real Talk with Mia Nele coming to you live on SABC3. Social media has been one of the biggest platforms that is used to voice opinions, educate the public or start movements of whatever kind, serious or not. A new challenge has hit social media to get us all fit as winter settles in and it's called the hashtag house music gym challenge. I am as curious as you. But I can tell you that our putiza and music, our man crushes, I'm talking about Prince KB, Knock Music, DJ Tira, Aro Ladies, uh, Donald and Moby Dixon are going head to head, or should I say bicep to bicep in the gym. We've got Donald and Moby Dixon in studio later to tell us all about it uh, as entertainers and how essential it is for them as entertainers to their lifestyles to be fit. But first, today, uh, you, are you aware that one third of South Africa's households are run by single mothers that are unemployed and struggling to make ends meet uh, for their children? Two phenomenal women saw the need to help low-income communities of South Africa by introducing an initiative called the Clothing Bank. Have a look at this. The Clothing Bank's vision is to support, skill and develop unemployed mothers so that they can eradicate poverty in their lives. We do this by building relationships with the major retailers who donate all their excess stock to our cause. This stock is in turn used as the tool to teach unemployed women how to run businesses. They are then supported through a two-year holistic development program which includes life skills, business skills and finance skills. We have six branches around the country and those branches can support 400 new women a year. So in total we have 800 women training during, at any given time. Since inception we have trained over a thousand women and they're all now equipped to run small businesses. Impressive. And to tell us a little bit more about this great initiative is Tracy Lee Gilmore, who is the co-founder, let me not give her all the rights now, she's the co-founder for the Clothing Bank, and she flew in all the way from Cape Town earlier today, especially for us. Thank you for that, Tracy. Thank you for having us. But I mean, you are a do-gooder, though. This is you. <laughs> is, is, is that what your friends call you during Sunday brides? <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> Have you always been like that? Because I understand before this, you did uh, you had an NPO where you would give clothes to people going to interviews, you know. So for the first time, and obviously they don't have, you know, the right clothes to go and impress, you know, a, a, a potential employer. So that's what you did. That's right. Um, we were a social enterprise, so uh, we're not actually run as a charity. Yeah. So we focus on empowering women, and our mission is to develop unemployed women. That's oh. always been our passion, is, is unemployed women. You know, we have a lot of single mothers in our program, yeah. and we need to empower them so that they can have a future for their children and yeah. make, have choices and make decisions for themselves. So you call yourself a, you said social, social enterprise, enterprise, therefore you're a social entrepreneur. I, I read up that that's what you like to call yourself. Yes, well, you know, that's what we get called most of the time. Yeah. Because <laughs> our business is a bit of a hybrid. We are a non-profit organization, mm. but we use business principles to run the organization. Please unpack that for me. So we are about 80% self-funded. So the relationships that we have with all these big retailers, who, uh. and they donate all the stock to us, mm. we then in turn sell that stock to the women in our program at mm. a very reduced rate and then we obviously earning an income from that. All right, there we go, there we go. So it is the clothing bank, this is what it's called. Correct. Uh, so explain the, um, the, 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 the plan to me. You go to major retailers and is, 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 are these clothes that are out of season that they're not using any longer and then they give it to you guys at a reduced price or do they give it to you for free? So they actually give it to us for free. Oh, that's it's lovely. It's a win-win situation because they can earn enterprise development points on their scorecards. Yes. So also this product was also just disappearing into the system before. Mm. You know, um, some of it was going to charities, but you would find that boys' homes would end up with high heel shoes. There was no real match. Mm. And it wasn't really making an impact. Mm. So, but I must say that the support we've had goes way beyond the call of duty with, the retail, with our mm. retail partners. And just to give you a sense of scale, uh, last year alone, we received 1.8 million items through our relationship from our partners. Okay, so um, 829 women, this is who you're empowering at the moment, right? Yes. And over six branches around the country. Um, run it down for me. So then the, 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 the retailers give you guys the clothes and then do they all descend upon one place where you guys store everything and then what's the, the rollout plan from there? Mm. So logistically, we actually we, we collect from back of store. So we've got a transport service provider in each centre. 
So it also helps the retailers in that respect because we're actually collecting and saving their money as well. True. So we collect. And you're actually saving them storage space, just by the way. Hugely. Because absolutely. that's where uh, lots of companies are spending lots of money where you, there's just, there's no space. There's it's no expensive space. space. It's expensive. Yes. So you're helping them in that yes. regard as well. So then you guys collect. So we collect, we take everything back to our central, our branches, our six branches, our five branches actually. Yeah. Um, and then we open all the products, we debrand everything. Mm. So we have to cut through the label to make sure that mostly so that the women in our program so that their customers don't take it back to the store for a refund. That's a big problem, obviously, uh, that would be a huge problem. So we debrand everything. Most of our retailers don't mind if their label is still in, but it must be cut through. Okay. It then gets put into our system and hang up in our warehouse ready for redistribution. Mm. And 80% goes to the women in our program, so they will come in at any given day of the week um, according to their schedule, mm. and they will shop, buy the stock, go out, sell the stock, make a profit, come back, buy more stock. Mm. They're also it's very, very busy because it's, we're running a training program as well. So um, in a given, any given week, they'll be in class one day a week doing business skills. They'll get lots of coaching and mentoring. We do a lot of support. Because you know, in the beginning, we thought, this is a great opportunity, a great idea. Yeah. What, what more do we need? A bit of record keeping skills and a great product. We should be, we great should personalities to sell the clothes. Absolutely. Hey, What's the problem? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we soon realized that people needed a lot of healing to take place. A lot of mm. single women or, or mothers or just women in general are broken. Mm. You know, we, we get stuck in our past and we need to let go of those past hurts. So we do a lot of, of counseling, a lot of coaching. I was about to say, do you find that these business classes also turn into, you know, a counseling class? Because if there's 20 of us who, because here's the thing about, you know, the, the, the single woman phenomenon and uh, sometimes it, it's, it's due to domestic abuse and sometimes it's due to absenteeism from, from the fathers, is that it's quite isolating. So yes. then you think you're the only one. So now you're sitting in a room with 20 other women who've got the same problem as you. They just want to feed their kids and they want to move forward in life. So it's almost, it's, it's a... <sighs> Absolutely. And it's a sisterhood that develops out of, that, of the group. It becomes a very, very close-knit group. Mm. And, you know, not everybody's ready to share straight off. Yes. But when you're in a group and you see people opening up, you start to open up. Yeah. So it's, it's, so, it's so rewarding to watch people develop and grow and heal. Uh, so f just from a business level now, because if, if retailers are giving you free clothes, do you find that you can't reject anything where you're like, thanks, we won't be needing that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know, that does happen. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> but not from the retailers. Yeah. You know, people, um, especially with secondhand clothing, people uh. need to be educated around secondhand clothing. You know, I think we become very attached to our clothes. Yes. Um, and we think that they're looking fabulous, but they're five years old and they really aren't suitable. Yes. There's no dignity attached yes. to them. Firstly, we shouldn't even give them to charity. And secondly, um, they can't be sold, on yeah. sold. So, you know, gently used clothing. A gently yes. used clothing. I like that term. Um, apparently, your dad was an entrepreneur, and that's why you've got the entrepreneurial DNA yes. in you. But I mean, surely this this is you say it's part you know NPO, but but you run it like a business. Mm -hmm. It's still a bit of a service. Have you never wanted to be in corporate? You know, kicking down doors, climbing the, the corporate ladder, corner office. You know, personally, no, not at all. But my partner, Tracy Chambers, yes. uh, came from that industry. She r used to work for Woolworths yeah. oh. and she was um, on the executive committee. So she's walked that talk. Um, and that actually helps it us does. considerably in the organization. Because she knows how she the, the inner workings of retail right. and those are your, your, you know, your biggest suppliers. Yes. So how does one become, let's say I'm a single mother and I want to be an entrepreneur and, you know, team up with the clothing yes. bank. How do we do it? So the best thing to do is to have a look at our website. And, and contact the branch closest to where you're living. Yeah. And then we will invite you to come to an information day. Yeah. And the information day runs from about nine o'clock to about one o'clock. And we really unpack everything that the organization's about. What we expect from you and what you can expect from us, because we're two pieces of this puzzle. We mm. need to make it work together. Um, after the information day, we then whittle down our selection process mm. and we ask people to come back and workshop with us for a, for a day. Mm. And that workshop is really just about emotional readiness. You know, mm. we are about running a business and it's about, are you ready to let go? Um, mm. We're not social workers, we're not psychologists. If you've been through a recent trauma, get some healing okay. um, and some, some deep, deep counseling and then come to us in six months time. That's kind of what we suggest. Yeah. You know, obviously if things go wrong during your journey with us, we, we're there to pick up the pieces and do what we can. Mm. But we just say, try and get some healing first. After the, info, after, after the workshop, people then actually come in and volunteer with us for an entire month, yeah. two days a week. And we do do a stipend then for transport,
but that also tests um, work ethic. Yeah. Are you serious? Are we serious about you? Are you serious about yeah. you? All right, so I think you and I can talk about it forever, but coming up next, uh, we get to meet one of the clothing bank's beneficiaries. And breaking news, uh, for all the exhausted super moms going through so much every single day, check our social media pages to stand a chance to win a pampering treat. Uh, in 200 words or less, tell us how because of your mother, you have overcome many of life's hurdles. It is Mother's Day this Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, all of a sudden, the lights went off. Uh, five of you could win a mom and daughter spa voucher just in time to celebrate Mother's Day this Sunday. Uh, you have to be based in Joburg, however, or you have to be able to travel here. Sorry, 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 sorry to all our loyal viewers based all over the country. But trust me, obviously, one of these days we'll do something for you. We'll be back after the break. Welcome back to Real Talk. Graduates from the Clothing Bank or TVC's five branches across the country have gone to establish small businesses such as suck shops, creches, cleaning businesses and other small businesses whilst operating from their living rooms or rented shipping containers. We heard from Tracy Lee, one of the co-founders. Now we welcome Don Bilikhule, who first-hand witnessed the change that this organization has made for her life and her two children. Well, welcome Don just now. We've got a voice note uh, from someone who's also testifying about the clothing bank. Let's hear it. Hey, this is Nabumarelo Masugu. My mom, my mom works the um, TCP is a very good initiative. It has helped her a lot. She even managed to open her own shop at um, Mufulo. Um, her name is Princess Masubi. And it is really, really a good initiative. Um, it has helped her a lot and us a lot. And we would like to thank TCB for giving her the opportunity to, to be able to, to work there. And she is a graduate as well. She graduated this year in February. And it was a great experience for her and for us too. And we'd like to thank TCB for giving her the opportunity. Thank you. So, you know, we're getting it first and we're also getting it first hand from you. Um, have you graduated? Yes, I graduated in February. And how long is the course before you get to graduate? It's uh, one year, six months. One year, okay. six months, yes. And when you graduate, what does it mean? What are you allowed to do? Uh, when you graduate, that means you are, you finished the course. Yeah. Yes, you finish the classes because at TCP, we have the classes, different classes like coaching, counseling, and ISBP. Yeah. ISBP is then informal uh, small business practice. Yeah. Yes before it was sponsored by uh, CETA. Oh, now yes. Yes, oh, it's called by ASBP. So when you graduated, that means you have finished the ASBP, oh. the small business practice. Tracy, do you, do you, because I mean, it's a question I ask even, you know, the biggest of businessmen that come into the show where I ask, can entrepreneurship be taught? Because there's also this notion that it has to be inherently in you to be able to hustle, to grow, to, you know, to collect. It's such a debate. Yeah. We don't talk about entrepreneurship. We talk about small business. Uh -huh. Anybody can learn to run a small business. Not everybody's an entrepreneur. Okay. And out of the clothing bank, entrepreneurs emerge. Mm. But most um, women plateau, but they're happy where they are. And they, they're, they're providing for their families, and they're running good businesses. Their lives have improved, mm. and they're happy. I, I like mm. that. Domi, do you feel that, you know, we, we should raise women to want to own businesses more because I don't know about you, but personally, you know, as exposed as I was growing up, you know, and by a wonderful household, I was never, I was never taught to run a business. Do you think that it's important that we do that? Yes, it is because me, it is, uh, the clothing bank changed my life a lot. So I encourage women to stand up and raise and work for themselves because at the clothing bank, they don't give a woman a fish. They teach a woman how to catch a fish so she can fry her own fish. Oh. And you were unemployed for 10 years? Yes. And you had two children? Yes, I have two boys. Two boys. So what were you doing in those 10 years? How were you making sure that they survive? Mm, the father is always there helping. Yeah. yeah. But with the father alone, is not enough. 
it's nice if you try as a woman and yeah. stand up for your kids. So TCP gave me a chance uh -huh. to be the person that I am today because when I started at TCP, my life was not like today. Ne? Yes. Um, cause also, in that 10 years, are you going for job interviews? Are you trying to get jobs? Are you, are you trying to do things to get money? Yes, I was working part-time jobs, six months, two months, and trying to go to Jobex, C CBD, stock, the second hand clothes. I was trying, I was not like not sitting, doing nothing. Yeah. Yes, I was still hustling. But how was your, your spirit? Were you not getting knocked down and knocked down and depressed and, you know, in a dark place? Because 10 years of not having employment, it can do something to your, to your, to your psychology, right? Yes, it was traumatizing because I was like running a business without the knowledge of running a business, yeah. without knowing how to save. So with TCP, it told me a lot. Mm. I know how to save. I know how to run a business. Mm. I know how it's important to make a difference between personal money and the business money. Mm. Yes. So Tracy, can one fail the course? No, you okay. can't fail the course. Um, people do drop off the course. So our retention rate's about 60%, which we'd like it to be much higher. Okay. Um, but people do leave. And I think it's sometimes because it's overwhelming, because it is demanding. Mm. Um, and sometimes something goes wrong in your personal life and you've got to look after your mom or something, mm -hmm. you know, and then um, and a lot of self-belief. So we work a lot on self-esteem, mm. on building up that self-esteem, developing I can moments. The whole ecosystem is structured around I can moments. Yeah. So every single day you leave the classroom or you leave an interaction feeling like, gosh, I've achieved that, I can do it. Yeah. And then that, yeah. that, that grows over the two year time. Okay, and Jombi, what businesses, what, what, what are you running now? At the moment, I'm still busy with the clothing bank. I'm running the clove business. Okay. Yes. I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> you, look, you look very good. What well, was your dream? You. What did you want to do when you were a, a, a little child? You know, what, what did you envision yourself as? Okay. Because at high school, I studied technical engineering. Okay. So, you know, when we are at school, we are dreaming about what we are learning by that time. Mm. Uh, my dream was to be an engineer. So um, after high school, I got a job at one of the call centers. Mm. So after then, I just realized I like heel and the dress code of being in the office. Yes. <laughs> so after, after um, that call center, yeah. I, they called me one of the company, the engineering company. When I get to the interview, uh, ladies were wearing waking boots and overalls. And, overall. so and reflector sister, jackets, yeah. mama, and hard heads. <laughs> so I'm like, uh oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> This is not me. Yeah. I, I refuse to take a job. So I was continuing with the office job until I get, um, after, oh, through on, it was a through on the Yellow Pages company. Mm. Uh, I resigned and through on thinking of starting a business because I started a business while I was at through on mm. because of the financial problems. Yes. So I just started selling handbags from China Mall and the bedding and the stuff. So this is a it's, a, it's a, it's a great marriage then, Tracy. I mean, it was always inherently in her to want to sell clothes and you just provided the platform at a much cheaper rate. Yes. Yeah, people thank us so, so many, so, so many people thank us, but yeah. actually we put the tools down and Tommy picked them up. Yes. You know, th th she made it happen for herself. Yeah. So people do. People astound you all the time. Coming from really difficult backgrounds, yeah. take the opportunity and run. So, what are your aspirations for the clothing bank? I mean, I know is it four? Is it, is it six or, or five, branches? five branches? Five branches. Five branches. Yes. Are we looking to open a sixth one? So we're actually starting to work with men now. Oh, great! Yes. So, nice. You know, um, I was nervous about working with men because yeah. we hadn't worked with men before. Um, but it's been, it's been a fantastic journey. We've piloted a project with um, a big um, retailer that does electrical appliances. Okay. And we're now recruiting unemployed men. We're giving them the same skills that we do with the business skills on mm. the coaching and the mentoring. And they've yeah. got to do all the girly stuff too, yeah. which is great. Um, and we also do technical skills. So they're, they're buying the appliances from us, repairing them and on selling them. And we have three branches uh, so far of that. Mm. We've got a little fourth one starting as well. Mm. So, you know, We've got, to, we've got to, as South Africans, we've all got to work together. That's to exactly make what I was going to say, that I, yes. I'd, I'd want to see this on a, on, on a scale that's multiplied a hundred, a thousand times, because, yes. you know, you're not, you're not being charity, you're not giving people things and be like, oh, it's winter, here's a blanket. You're saying, oh, it's winter, here's 10 blankets, go sell them. Yes. 
And I really think that that's the business model the entire country should take. Tracy, thank you so much for the work that you do. Thank you. Don't be, keep it up. All right. All I want right. to see a, a fleet of shops, franchises that you've opened up in the next 10 years. No, I'm growing every day. TCP gave me an opportunity. Ah. So I see myself up there. <laughs> we'll hold you to that. The Clothing Bank is indeed one of the organizations out there making a difference. Visit their website and see what you too can do today to better the lives of mothers and women less fortunate than you. And as you heard, they just opened a branch now. They're also dealing with men. So really, across the country, this is something that is growing us economically. So here's a gentle reminder. Mother's Day is just days away. And I hope that you prepared and beat the more rush. But to those of you who are a bit light in your pockets but wish to stand a chance to celebrate your moms because of all the joy that they've helped you achieve in your life, then check out our competition online. Five mother and spa vouchers are up for grabs on the other side of this break. Award-winning DJs producer Moby Dixon will be on the couch. Welcome back to Real Talk with Anneli right here on SABC3. My guest now is accomplished and award-winning DJ, a producer who's been in the music business for over a decade. Best dance album winner at the 16th Metro FM Music Awards last year. Uh, do you, obviously, you remember the song City Rains, right? And now listen to a small sample of this house music maestro's latest single. It's called Budiza and it's been making waves as the top pick on the biggest radio stations. The one banana in me, shan is on the road. In Mondo Yan, it's a now the crew's dancing and then they're going to forget that they're at work. So just let's calm down. Welcome Moby Dixon to the show. Oh, first thing first, lots of people on social media are just like, please, the first thing you must ask him is, how do we get from Mabin Duli to Moby Dixon? Whoa. Uh, well, Moby comes from Mabi because people could never pronounce my name. You know, so in high school, you know, tertiary. Yeah. So I was just irritated every time people can't pronounce my name. So that's how Moby came about. Uh-huh. And then Dixon, uh, it just sounded cool, man. No, but <laughs> yeah, but I get I'm so glad you said this. This is the thing. When do you first yeah. hear Dixon and think to yourself, that's actually quite yeah. cool. I'm going to use that as my mm. pseudo surname. Actually, there's a friend of mine. His name is Dixon. So we're introducing ourselves to, to these uh, group Girls. of young ladies. Mm -hmm. So uh -huh. I'm like, I'm Moby. He's like, I'm Dixon. And they're like, oh, Moby Dixon. And then I was like, whoa, that sounds cool. <laughs> <laughs> that and then, yeah, man, I checked his name, poor guy. Are you still his friend? Yeah, he's still my friend. So he's what does he introduce himself as now since you took Moby Dixon? He's still Dixon. Is so that he, his real name? So, hi, guys. This is Moby Dixon, and this is Dixon. Dixon. <laughs> he's still his real name. So. I would actually take 10% of everything you own. <laughs> you know that. Don't give him any ideas. <laughs> I'll take 10%. <laughs> so you studied uh, sound engineering. Yes, yes. And you've got a few diplomas from that end. How do mm. you, you know, then end up with such a, a keen music instrument? Because you are a music creator. Yes. I, I've even heard people say you're a genius. And mm. I'm just like, yeah, genius. Okay. But to uh, be fair, you create music. You make it. So how does that tie in together? Yeah, man, I think it's because I started at a really early age. You know, I think at the age of 13, 14, I started making beats, you know, way back when, like, there was only, like, a handful of, of producers or beat makers in the yeah. country. I was just fortunate enough to have a computer at home and I was very interested in just technology and learning softwares and mm. I came ac across a production software, music production software. Mm. And then I basically started teaching myself how to make beats, you know, uh, at uh, in standard five, you know, which was like unheard of back then. And then mm. in high school, I started having my own beats, which I started giving to rappers. You know, I was even a rapper at the time. Um, what was your rapper name? Empiric. <laughs> Yeah, based on experience, not theory. Yeah, so I think that, that experience, you know, throughout the years has really honed my, my skills. And then when I formalized it and went to school for it, yeah. you know, I just enhanced it that much more. Did yeah. it take um, 
a while or effort to convince you know your parents that that's what you want to study because I, I can imagine mm. you know black parents you're like mom i'm gonna study engineering they're like yes there's a civil engineer mm, like he's sound. going to build how and like sound <laughs> <laughs> yeah yo it's been a long journey man trying to really convince them that this is actually something sustainable and it's a career yeah. and i've literally had to prove it you know uh, and it doesn't help that i kind of uh went into the pits which they 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 kind of uh feared that i would go into yeah. you know i kind of went off the rails you know got involved in drugs alcohol yeah. you know and then they were like ah no you see this is what we didn't want from this industry but so then i had to pick myself up all over again and mm. prove myself and it's literally only like now like in recent years that they really believe that okay no this is something sustainable. The yeah. calling is, was really a yeah, calling. Yeah, it wasn't yeah, just yeah. something, you know, fly by night. Yeah. So when you are in Standard 5 and you're making beats, ne? Hmm. I want to go back there. We'll, we'll get into the other stuff later. How does the music come to you? Because, you know, some people, they hear it when they're sleeping and then they wake up and then they record it on their phones. Some people, they can watch a movie and that movie can, you know, mm -hmm. in inspire a song in them. You, some people see colors going together and then uh, I know Pharrell said that, that for him music comes as colors. Yeah, for yeah. you, how does the music find you? What are you doing when it finds you? I, I really think it's, it's proof that it's really something natural and, and God-given and yeah. something that I also believe comes from my ancestors because it just came naturally. You know, um, I had no idea how to use these softwares or how mm. to create music, but as soon as I got that software, I was able to teach myself with mm. no with no guidance, with no education. I sat there all day teaching myself how to create music, and I, I love music as yeah. well. So, and I grew up listening to to like jazz, you know, with my dad and R and B and stuff. Yeah. So I just had that love for music, and then I naturally just was able to start creating the, these songs. It was really something extraordinary at that, especially at that time. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, what is the time frame between? what you would say is your first good song and the first time you got proper recognition mm. across the country? Wow, I think I actually, I actually posted this some years back that when, when I got my first hit, you yeah. know, City Rains in 2014, yeah. I had already about, I had about over 80 songs that, that were already regist just registered at Samro. And I had hundreds of others that were sitting on my computer. Yeah. But it was just that one song that made that made the difference. And what is the difference? What what, what could you see change? You know, Bef mm. let's go. You know, before City Rain, after City Rain. What was the glaring mm. thing where you can see? Ah, I can see a mood shift here. I think one of the most uh, significant is, is is obviously radio play. You know, once ah. you once you start stuff starts being played on radio, and then I remember we had a big fight with with my team at the time because then there was a demand for a music video. Mm. And I didn't have any money to shoot a music video, but I had a camera. So I literally, I shot the video myself. Uh, that's why I'm not in the video, because I shot the, shooting I shot <laughs> <laughs> and the video was bad. The quality was really bad, but I was like, guys, we don't have a choice. We have to put this video out. And by the grace of God, that video went on to be number one on every, on every channel, channel in the country. And now when you watch it, you're like, ah, oh, it's yeah. not video A. Yeah, hey, I'm like, Ish. <laughs> Maybe you should reshoot it. No, no, but it's fine. It's part of my history. It's part yeah, of my journey, yeah. Because after that, you know, then, you know, we did better, better videos. Then the yeah. real cameras came out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, did you hear that? 80 mm. songs before he got a hit mm. and still with 100 in his catalog that he hasn't released. This is what we talk about mm. when we talk about perseverance. After the break, we talk about the burnout that landed him in hospital and being disqualified from this year's summers. Uh, nowadays, Moby is taking better care of himself. I mean, look at him eh? in his member-only jacket. And this <laughs> is why he recently accepted the hashtag House Music Gym Challenge with four other South African heavyweights uh, in efforts to inspire their fellow entertainers and also me and you to get there and get fit. Donald is also in studio. He'll be here to speak about the challenge as well. We're coming back after these.
Today we're showing you a bit about the House Music Gym Challenge. And I saw a few of my friends, uh, Donald, Prince KB, Mac Music and DJ Tira just decided to get together, you know, and uh, inspire each other actually, you know, uh, just to work out, to keep consistent in the working out and to try and eat healthy and live a healthy lifestyle. It's called the House Music um, Gym Challenge, but it's really, really to inspire the whole industry as a whole, you know, and most importantly, to inspire people at home. Whether it's walking, it's running, coming to the gym, doing weights, or coming to classes, dancing, whatever it is, as long as you're living an active lifestyle. So next thing you know, you know, the, the challenge just became more and more serious. and. People on social media were like really responding to the hashtag, the hashtag house music gym challenge. And now here we are, I mean, we're on TV. And uh, yeah, man, big things to come around, around this whole challenge. You know, we've got a show planned in September uh, after the big reveal, where we're all gonna show off our bodies. First of September, everyone tops off. People are really responding positively to what we've decided to do to the movement and it's really beautiful to see. People are hashtagging House Music Gym Challenge and they're going to the, to the gym and showing us their videos and their pictures of themselves, you know, their progress. Um, the main idea is that on the 1st of September, we are all going to show our, resu our results or the progress that, that, you know, thereof. It's not just about you know, DJs or singers. It's about every single person that's out there. We have a following and we have a responsibility to inspire people at home. And this is one of the ways that we, we're trying to give back to our peers and, and our fans, our followers. Every single person is gonna be talking House Music Gym Challenge on the 1st of September. I cannot wait. And I just wanna urge you, if you haven't started, start now, not tomorrow, now. You've got about, I don't know, is it three or four months at least to go. Um, yeah, man, so good luck and see you on the 1st of September. First of September, tops off, suns out, guns Top, out. Soap. And bottoms. <laughs> Welcome back. That was Donald and Moby Dixon showing us they mean serious business at the gym. I'm still chatting to Moby. He's overcome some major obstacles in his life, but today lives to tell the tale of surviving drugs and alcohol addiction. Today he is a celebrated multi-platinum selling artist. So this is why he is working up a sweat this winter uh, at the gym to get fit and inspire all of us to get our revenge bodies on against the cold months ahead. We all know summer bodies are made when? In winter. winter. Okay. Winter. You were in Joburg and then you moved to Eastern Cape because you felt you want to grow that music industry, right? On that side. Am I correct in assuming that? Yeah, that was partly the reason but the main reason was because like my whole life fell apart okay you know so i was okay. actually deported back home deported by your parents <laughs> yeah. do they come fetch you <laughs> in a baggy and the they loaded your bed everything all right so you then know? when you were there that's when then you started from grassroots level yeah. then building it and yeah, hence yeah, then yeah. brought some sort of esteem to the eastern cape music yeah oh i see what i was so happening. i was here to study mm. so I, I, that's when i did uh, my it diplomas and yeah. my sound engineering so throughout that i was doing music on the side oh. and trying to make it as a as a, as a musician mm. and then i fell off the rails fortunately i did pass you know uh, cum laude Hey, but hey, hey, wait, yeah, stop. Saying, we'll we'll, we'll stop. We'll stop. <laughs> he did pass. Cum laude. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> uh, but then, you know, I, the, you know, life got the better of me, you know. And How do you I'm, tell your parents that you're addicted to drugs and alcohol? Well, I kind of got sick, you know. I, I got, uh, got into a depression, mm. uh, got into, you know, a mild psychosis. You know, so literally my friends like had no choice but to, to take me to hospital and call my parents, you know, and that's when uh, they came to to come and fetch me, oh. you know, then I had to go home and went to rehab, yeah. cleaned up my act and yeah. Would you say that the, the not knowing when your big break is going to come in music contributed to you looking to alcohol and drugs to make yourself feel better that, mm -hmm. you know, my break is coming? Oh yes, definitely. It was definitely a crutch, you know. It was that definitely uh, something to try and forget the yeah. pain because it was very painful, you know. Yeah. You, you feel that this, this this talent is, you know, this blessing is like a curse, you know. And you're watching and everyone's you're watching, dream happen. Yeah. You know, everyone, well, you know, you the, mm -hmm. it's your circle, you know these people, you hang yep. out with them and you're asking yourself, when What's is the sun going to shine here? Yeah, you know, watching guys make it, you know, trying 
to get opportunities from people and you know doors being shut in your face mm. um, you know so it was kind of a way for me to deal with all of that you know mm. yeah all right so um you're nominated for a summer and then you are not nominated for a summer <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, <coughs> do you know what i don't understand and i don't want to put something flying here mm. I don't, what i don't understand is if you nominated, that mm. means the summers then didn't do their homework. Do you see what mm. I'm saying? So when you found out that you're not nominated anymore because you submitted a song that was an international song, but then you then did a remix, right? Yes. How are you feeling? Are you, are you angry? Are you upset? Are you disappointed? Are you blameful of other people? Not at all, actually. Not at all. Because firstly, I was surprised that I was even nominated because uh. I knew I know the rules. You know, uh, <laughs> then why did you enter the <laughs> song? We submitted, we, you know, uh, obviously the, the, the label submitted everything, okay. you know, uh, okay. my, my current album, which was actually a remix album, you know, which was full of remixes of my own songs and, yes. and it's like remixes I did for Davido and this particular one I did for Maxwell. Yeah. Um, so we were surprised. Okay. It's nominated. And I'm like, okay, cool. Like, uh, Shh, sure, tell okay, whatever. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, and then next thing you know, they say, "No, I've been disqualified." What, 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 what? But then our, our question was, why was it nominated in the in first, the first place? place? You know, but you know, nonetheless, we just hope that whoever made that mistake, you know, can just learn from it and 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 grow from it. You know, because uh, at the end of the day, the summers aren't going anywhere. They're still our our flagship uh, yeah, event. Yeah, I was about to say, you know, and so you're, you're gonna get nominated a good yeah. hundred times more as well. So it's yeah, fine. Yeah, you know, I've been nominated in yeah. the previous years, and I've also got one more nomination left in uh, this year. Yeah. So it's cool. It's cool. Good yeah. luck for that. Yeah. Uh, living a healthy lifestyle and exercising regularly are challenges for almost everyone. After the break, uh, he's Moby Dixon's gym partner. Sometimes, but he plans to win on the 1st of September in the big reveal. The hashtag is hashtag house music gym challenge. Uh, come September 1st, it's Donald, okay? And he thinks he's gonna win. We'll find out for him after the break if he is going to be the winner or not. But whose team are you on? Hashtag Team Moby, hashtag Team Donald, Team Nog Music, Prince KB. Did I mention Tira? Because I know it's going to come be like, ah, when I upaye, so when I upaye, so are you not mentioning me? Listen, they've all teamed up together to bring you one of the hottest challenges to hit social media. The hashtag House Music Gym Challenge, which is a fun way of combining their love for fitness and music. There's nothing more thrilling than watching your favorite artists sing their hearts out while executing impressive choreography. A truly great performance requires one to be in peak physical form. No one knows this better than our own Mr. Maxwell. <laughs> Mr. Indra, <laughs> Mr. Donald in denial. Welcome back. The one and only. Welcome Thank you. back. Thank Welcome. you so much for having Easily me. Easily one of my favorite interviews, just by the way. Oh wow! Yeah. Thank you. you know, yeah. I really enjoyed it. A lot of my, a lot of my my fans enjoyed it. They they, yeah. they said a lot about how they never knew the person that I was, and yeah. after that interview, they got to know me a yeah. little better. Yeah. Even my friends were like, "I can't do serious like Donald." Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, the serious guy. Yeah. But let's be honest. Yeah. This house music gym challenge. Yes. You do have a bit of an advantage. I mean, in a bit of a way, yeah. Me and Knock Music mm. have a bit of a, um, an advantage because we've actually been doing this for a couple of years. Um, mm. I think I've been in the gym for five years yeah. now. And uh, I've been taking off my shirt on stage for quite a while. I, Everybody I mean, knows that. It's for 2 a.m. in the morning, <laughs> Donald's shirt's not off. It means I mean, the party's not over. You know what I mean? So, uh, <laughs> 
it, it, there is a little bit of that, but at the end of the day, it doesn't make it, there are no excuses. Yeah. We, we all have the same time to get ready for the 1st of September. Now, I mean, sometimes I kind of, you know, go off the rails, yeah. you know, get a little bit lazy, but, but now I'm not getting lazy for anything because I'm competitive. Yeah. And all these guys are competitive yeah. there. <laughs> They're just out there talking a lot of things on Instagram, <laughs> you know, on social media. So we're going to have to see, you know. Yeah. Uh, are you guys on a WhatsApp group where you talk to each other about we the, are on a what's WhatsApp it called? Group. It's, <laughs> it's called the House Music Challenge. Yeah, I think that's what it's called. Mm -hmm. Yeah, House Music Gym Challenge. Yeah. House Music Gym yeah, Challenge. Yeah, it's, it's straightforward. Like and that, what yeah. are the rules? Because surely we have to look at progress, right? Yeah. yeah. So it, we can't necessarily look at who's lost the most weight because, I mean, if you started with 150 kilograms, you've yeah. got more to lose. So therefore... Actually, to be honest, the rules might be a little bit unfair, but the, 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 we're looking at the best body. It does not matter how much, what, what you think, maybe you were not ready, okay. you signed up for it. So on the 1st of September, whoever looks the sexiest is, is the guy that's going to win. Who votes? Simple. And also I must clear it up because yeah. I think sometimes some of the teams and the fans at home don't understand. This is not about the biggest hit on the dance floor. Okay. It's not about who's got the biggest hit. It's not about club <laughs> control, okay? Because this he is, sings love songs, okay? You know, this is about <laughs> the best body on the 1st of September. We just want to shift things a little bit. We mm. want our fans to get, them, you know, to, to get to know us a little bit better yeah. with regards to that and also to get involved in gym with us. So who decides who has the best body? Is it us as the public? We no, decided definitely not. The reason we decided not to do that is because we know that fans are very biased. So yes. it doesn't matter whether So knock you music are, fans are going uh, to uh, kill knock all music, of you. Knock music fans already have already decided <laughs> yeah, that but he's the winner. <laughs> 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 you know, so we, we actually have a uh, professional. All right. Um, yeah, who's going to be judging us on the, on the night. And uh, they're going to decide who's got, I guess, the best proportion, yeah. everything. Best Just they're going to look at everything. But best physique yeah. as a whole. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. The healthiest looking. The healthiest and, looking. And, yeah. and all. So how do fans take part? Because I know that you guys are also saying, I mean, earlier you were saying, if you haven't started, start now. Yeah, yeah. How do we take part? So basically how everyone can get involved is that, you know, everyone has a phone right now. It's a social media uh, 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 space. Just, just shoot a, a video of yourself or a picture of yourself. Just show your body, show exercises of yourself, having a good time in the gym, and then hashtag House Music um, Gym Challenge, and you can tag us, Moby Dixon, Knock Music, Prince KB, and DJ Tira, mm. and just kind of like let's see progress. You know what I mean? So every ah. single week you can you can post one video or one picture just to show us how far you are, and then yeah, we will meet on the first of September. Everybody shows it. So basically, on the first of September, we we taking over social media. It's the big reveal. Yeah, and yeah. we taking over social. Everyone is gonna post their their, their pictures. And uh, everyone, you know, not just us, yeah. but everyone at home also is going to also show us their bodies. And this is also for males and females. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's for every single person. I yeah. understand there's going to be a, a, an event, a bit of a concert, which yeah. is insane. Yeah. If you're looking at the five of you, yeah, 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 that yeah, lineup. Yeah, 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 we're working on something really huge to kind of celebrate the movement. I think it's a really positive movement it for, is. for, it for is. our people out there and active lifestyle is something that a lot of people kind of take for granted sometimes, mm. but it really helps in a in, 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 in lot in, 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 in us keeping a healthy lifestyle. You know, mm. you know, for us, we've got so much stress, man. You know, we're working every single day, we're in traffic. This, mm. You know, when you have a, a healthy mind, a healthy body, and a healthy mind, it helps you kind of get through your days. Um, and that's what, that's what we're trying to, to kind of um, urge everyone, to just go mm. out there and just be active and have a good time and be more happier, you know? Now yeah. that I think about it, mm. you don't have the advantage. Tira does. Because? Because, because of them. If Voshos and exercise, mm. eh? Voshos and <laughs> squatting machine, my guy. And I they, mean, that's them on stage every yeah. day. I mean, maybe for the legs, but, but Tira is, is slacking a little bit. And actually, I've got a message for Tira. Tira, you better, you better start moving, my man, because, you know, you, you, you know you are, you, you're older than all of us, and everybody <laughs> wants to see the, the experience. You know what I'm saying? So we want to see DJ Tira out there with a great body on the 1st of September, and he's slacking right now. <laughs> Donna just called out Brad Tira. You, could have, you might as well just call you older than us. Ah, and that's Tira. Krotman. Krotman. Speaking of messages for Tira, there's yeah. a message for you on our WhatsApp line. Roll oh, it. Wow. Molweni Anele. Hi, Donald. Oh, my God, my crush. Hi, Mother Dixon, baby. Hi, <laughs> Anele. <laughs> Hey guys. We are so excited. We're watching you guys and we're having so much fun. <laughs> oh my god. This is Kenzo, by the way. This is Sipe here. 
Yeah, sing about the Khini Tina. We love the show. But we do have a question for O'Donnell, though. Don't we? Yes, we do, Hadi. <laughs> how do you... How do you... How do you... <laughs> Hi, man, Donald. In few years, you can't even take a job. Just tell us, can't even take a job. Explain yourself. I, I don't know. I think I think we need to ask my mother about that. <laughs> but I also think even you know, as me being in the gym every single week has something to do with with at least having some good skin, yana. You know, mm, mm. yeah, great. You know. They're crashing on you so hard. Do you know mm. how I know this? It took them mm. 40 seconds to, to, to actually get to, to the to point. To the point. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, I love them just as much, man. Yeah. Yeah. This, this is this is really who we are. Who we are because of the people, man. Yeah. You know, and I'm I'm always gonna say this. The reason I have a job is because of the people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if Kosa people are gonna kill me, but Khini is Grahamstown, eh? Uh, yeah. They're from Grahamstown, so you need to go to Grahamstown and... No, I definitely need to and, go to and, and do something there. Yeah, for and them they must make sure they come to the show. Yeah, if yeah. they are like that, then, you know... Amen. Listen, good luck for the hashtag House Music Thank Gym you. Challenge. Thank you. Thank you so um, much. My man is on you. Yes, um, I know. I know. You are Team Donald forever. So. <laughs> I am Team Donald yep. forever. And Team Nug. And Team Moby. Oh, wow. And Team Dia. And Team Prince KZ. <laughs> Follow the five house heavyweights and vote for the best man and the best body. Obviously, the big reveal happens on the 1st of September. Uh, make sure that you're following that. And, you know, Donald makes a point. Jump on board as well. You know, show us yours. H, I think I'll start next week. Unfortunately, you that's all we have time you for think. this evening. <laughs> Thank you so much to my guests, Tracy Lee Gilmore, Don Bilukhule, Donald, as well as Moby Dixon. Uh, tomorrow, we've got another hot throb in studio. Tapela Mugwena will be here. And we'll also be discussing toxic relationships. So we want you to weigh in on that. From myself and the rest of the Real Talk team, it's been fun. Good night.